Hi guys, it's Cheryl. I was asked by quite a few of you to do a uh, tutorial for the Emily Binks tombstone. Obviously it can't be a full showing start to finish because she's already made and I have quite a few projects in the works so I can't necessarily make another one right now. But when I do, I'll, I'll do that one start to finish but I'll kind of give you an explanation of what I did and how I did it um, to maybe jumpstart you guys on what to do. So. I start off, I'm going to put her away for a second, so I start off with 2 inch thick foam board. Now the 2 inch thick, they all have perforations in them, but I like the thicker stone, so there's perforation, it comes in four parts, two bigger sections which is here to here, and a smaller section here to here. So um, I cut two pieces, the back piece of Emily is the full one big section and one shorter section. The front part of her is one big section because I wanted the back part to be wider so it looked like the wings were behind her. So what I did, and you have to excuse this video and the sound, and let me move this down a little bit. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's in two pieces. So the back piece is the one and a half wide board, and down here is the one the one width board. So what I did is I first started with the doll. So this is just a porcelain doll that I got from Goodwill for $2.99. What I did was I hollowed out her body part, and I kept her arms and her head and like the top part with all the fluff in it because our arms had some wire in them, so they were able to be posed and will stay pretty nicely. Um, but what I did is, in order to know where I'm gonna cut, the back section is obviously taller than the front piece. So the front piece, I kinda held her up to say, okay, how high do I want her to be? And what I wanted to do was, she's actually kinda sitting on this front part. So I cut this front part right around here and kept it at an angle so that way her dress can come over it and cover that up. And then the back part, it's actually cut and it goes behind her head so that there's some support and I'll explain that in a minute or two minutes, however long it's gonna take. But what you do is you sandwich these two pieces together in the middle before you glue them. I have two PVC pipes, these are three quarter inch do not get half inch because your rebar will get stuck in them. Three quarter inch PVC pipes. What you do is on both sides on the inside, you etch out spaces for that PVC to go. Easiest way I do it is when I have them together, I take a piece of PVC and I kind of press into it so I know exactly on both sides where it's gonna go into. And then I either measure or I kind of eyeball. I lay the PVC on the inside, trace around it, and then I hollow, the, not hollow it, but I etch it out deep enough to where it's going to fit this flush inside both of them to come out the bottom. And I cut the PVC to where it's flush on the bottom. The base, how I make the base is, so this is her base. It's a two-tier. Um, some people think that she's glued on top of that base. She is not. Well, sorry again about the noises. She is glued, but... She's more secure than that. So how I make my bases is I have one of the smaller sections because they come long and you'll have a lot of this left over. I take the smaller section and I take the stones, put it on top. I then trace around the base, hollow that out in the middle, and then it slides in between. But I will secure that once I slide it in between. I'll put foam board adhesive on it just to make it stick. Um, the basic construction of the tombstones is I follow a woman by the name of Tara. She is on YouTube under Scary Lady Videos. Very talented woman, does things that will blow your mind. Um, she has a how-to on the basic construction of a tombstone. So that's what started me going back in May and I've been using that ever since. Um, so once I get the tombstone constructed, what I did on the top as well, before I glued these together, is up through the middle here, maybe about from her head 
to the top of the stone, a couple inches down. I etched out a little notch, and I have another piece of PVC that's running from here up to the top, sandwiched in between the middle of these two. Because then what I did is, once I had her hollowed out of her stuffing and everything, I slid her over that PVC, so the PVC is actually running through her head. She's not going anywhere. The wind can blow, she ain't coming off. Um, behind her head, the way that I cut the wings is I cut them around her head. So the back of her head is actually part of this foam. But what I did to hide that is when I did her draping, I ran the draping around the back. So it just kind of looks like a continuation of her head. Um, this is covered. So to make the doll, you throw the doll on there. You're going to make a concoction called Monster Mud. Um, you will hear different people use different formulas, but it's basically joint compound mixed with exterior latex paint. They all have different ratios as well. Some people will say three parts to one, some say four to one. I use five parts of joint compound to one part of paint. You'll mix that up in a bucket. It'll be kind of like creamy. Um, wear gloves because it's going to get messy and you're going to stain whatever it touches. So what I did for her draping is, again, Goodwill fine, is they had um, blackout drapes for, I think it was like 2 or $3. So I bought those, cut them into strips. This is actually one of them. The thicker the material, the better because it seems like it gets a little harder when you do the Monster Mud. Um, so what you do is you mix up the Monster Mud in a five gallon bucket. FYI, if you make too much, make sure that you have a lid on your bucket, otherwise it's gonna pretty much turn to concrete. Um, so what you'll do with your gloves on is you'll dip these in the bucket and then you'll wring them out with your fingers because you don't want it to have huge giant clumps on there. And Because at first when you're putting things on, when it's dry, it's gonna look weird, but once it gets wet with the monster mud, trust me, you like it. So you're going to wring out the Monster Mud so it is saturated. Make sure you go with your fingers too and work it through because you'll notice when you dip it in, you'll have some chunks that aren't covered. So just work it through make sure every little bit's covered. Then all I did is I literally just took these strips and just draped them all around her. Um, this is actually one, two, three, four, five. This is actually six pieces of cloth that I use. And you just drape them around her. And you can pull up some spots and as it starts to, it takes at least 24 to 48 hours to dry. The Monster Mud does. Um, I would suggest putting a fan on it if you have a dehumidifier, whatever. I do all my work in the garage, so I kind of keep a fan going, which it's going right now. Um, but you're going to cover all those pieces with the Monster Mud. Drape it over her head. Just kind of hide stuff. When it came to her face, her hair, and her hands, I literally just took a paintbrush, dolloped some Monster Mud on it, blotched it on her face, smeared it on her hair. Her hair I did spray with um, Gorilla Glue adhesive spray, just to kind of make it stiff, so it made it a little bit easier to paint the Monster Mud on. Um, so I painted all that on. The wing started off, I think some of you seen pictures of when I first started, and if not, look at the posts that everyone was commenting on. I put them in there somewhere. So these were just a big blob shape. And what I did is I looked at a bunch of different pictures of angel wings. And I just started like kind of making like little loops on there, sketching them out. But they're all carved with the Dremel tool, rotary tool. Um, if you can get one that has, and I'll show you. Sorry, again, noises, but it's after 10, and I'm doing this quick. If you get one that has this attachment, it's a lifesaver. Instead of holding this giant thing when you're carving, this is a lot better. It's like a pen, and I'm used to drawing stuff, so this was the way to go. Um, so literally just carve them out into shapes. It's kind of hard to screw up feathers because they're just... Pretty much circles with a line through it and then you just kind of do little wisps on the corners and let's see sorry so that's all it is they're just kind of like oval shapes with lines and then you just cut in the corners a little bit 
like so. There she is, isn't she pretty? Um, now, all of her etching that I did, I um, get on Word on my computer, the Word program. I print out what I want the lettering to look like. I um, trace it onto the phone by using carbon paper. Carbon paper is your friend. Um, some people will tape it on, like just a piece of paper, they'll tape it on and take a razor blade and cut around the letters, and then go back and still cut out the letters. I just tape, uh, put the carbon paper on, put the piece of paper over it, trace over it. Um, the pack that I got from Amazon, it's a 200 pack, and it came with these little wooden sticks with metal ball bearings on the end so that you can like trace on things and push into it. Um, so I did my stenciling on here. And then once your monster mud is dry, it will be hard, like a rock. I then cover the entire thing with dry lock. Dry lock is a masonry waterproofer and it does come in gray. Gray is your best friend. So I covered the entire thing with two coats of dry lock. On the base, I do three um, because, you know, with rain and everything else like that. Um, it should hold up nicely. And then came the paint. So I just painted her up. All of the high spots, you want to dry brush with some white. So dry brushing is basically lightly dip your brush in some paint and get off most of it that you can. So I just take a styrofoam plate, dip it in, and then wipe it off on the plate. And then you just lightly brush over the lighter areas. Where the darker areas are, the crevices, I paint those combination of, I do some grays, I do some greens, I do some browns, um, just to make her look like she was weathered. And then inside all the etching down here, I use black, a watered down black, So, and everything is acrylic paint. So I just water down a little bit of um, black acrylic paint and I use that to do inside all of my etching. I don't want to do straight black without water in it because then it looks straight black and I don't want that look. I want it to look, you know, a little bit washed out. Um, but hopefully that's enough to get you guys going. And like I said, for basic tombstone construction, really check out Scary Lady videos on YouTube. She has on there making tombstones. Plus she makes some phenomenal other things. She made this giant devil dog and Tara, I'm giving you a plug right now. Um, but check it out and I'm glad you all like Emily and any other questions, just reach out. Thanks guys.